Action, huh? Okay. One of the things is that you don't need to know how to design these generators, but you do need to know how they operate so you can troubleshoot them. If your generator is not working, how is it connected? Is it connected as a self-excited generator? So this, or is it a separately excited generator? Or is it a series generator? All of these things will then dictate how this generator operates and as far as troubleshooting will weigh into what you're doing. Okay? You may have this connected up with the field connected up backwards. Okay? So your output voltage is inverted. Instead of getting positive DC, you're getting negative DC out. Okay? You may have this motor turning the wrong, the generator turning the wrong way because your motor's going the wrong direction. Different things come into play as far as your troubleshooting. Okay? And if you have the basic understanding of what's going on here, and the next part we're going to talk about as far as voltage drop, you'll be better able to troubleshoot these things. Okay? Other questions? Yeah. So if you, you, if you lose your residual magnetism, do you also lose your ability to self-excite? Correct. So if you lose your residual magnetism, there's nothing to start this up at. Okay? And a lot of times if a generator just sits on a bench for a long time or sits somewhere, the residual magnetism in your pole pieces may go away. There's a term in the field called flashing the fields. Okay? Well, you'll put a heavy current through there to ex excite these fields here and put the uh, residual magnetism back in. In lab, you guys did that. If you remember, you went through and when you set the neutral plane for the generators, Okay. One of the things in setting the neutral plane, we had to use an AC signal, right? right. Well, the AC signal effectively scrambled all your residual magnetism in there. It was gone. It done. Okay. So the next part of the procedure was to connect up your variable DC voltage here across F1 and F2, bring it up until you had a half of amp current running through that shunt field, <coughs> and then slowly bring it back down, okay? And the reason for slowly bringing it back down was that you reduced your magnetic field without collapsing it and sending it the opposite direction, okay? Then once you've got that magnetic field reestablished, you've got your residual magnetism, okay? Then it would fire back up. When you said uh, that the field collapses, you can under certain conditions. If you drop that field real quick, it can collapse and cause it to polarize in opposite direction. That's why we have you <coughs> lowering it slowly. Okay. Now, when you give it the magnetism, is that something you'd be able to feel? Can you feel it? No, yeah, I mean, after you do it, like, if you, you turn If the you put a screwdriver up there, you might be able to feel... But I mean, if you turn the armature, it wouldn't feel any... No, you're not going to feel any resistance on that, okay? Um, but if you do put a small piece of metal in there, you might be able to feel some small... If you take a compass near it, you'll definitely be able to see the compass reacting to the residual magnetism, okay? If you do it to one pole and the other, you'll see the north and south polarization. <laughs> Okay. Miss the little piece when you were saying that um, that it could continue to cycle in that. Same it thing. continues in this cycle here, yes, <laughs> until it reaches saturation, which is where your rated voltage is at. Okay. We good? Yes. Does the amount of magnetism do you have to apply back to the armature? Is, is the amount of magnetism... Is, is that the same for any size generator or does it change with... It will change um, by the generator and, there, and your residual... The voltage that's generated due to residual magnetism will change with generators. Okay. We know that the lab volt generators we're using have a nominal voltage with a residual magnetism of about 3, volta, three volts. Okay. You have some other generator with different winding and different characteristics. It's going to be different. Okay. So, a quick question uh, on, on your drawings over there. Um, you start your motor. How, how's the motor started? 
Put it on over here. Camera here. Okay. How does the motor start? We start a motor. This is a prime mover. Now this can be an electric motor. It can be a water wheel. Okay, like at a Hoover Dam, for instance. A wind generator. Anything that's moving this generator. Okay? I'm going to bring up an exercise bike up. And you guys are going to go and start turning a generator. Okay? You're going to feel the power. So okay? you, you had to, you can manually start it. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good luck. Okay. Okay? But, then we'll get, once we start turning, we're going to start using that residual magnetism. That residual magnetism will cause a small voltage to be generated. Remember, we were at 3 volts. That 3 volts through 500 ohms got us 6 milliamps, right? That 6 milliamps increased the magnetic field, okay? That increase in magnetic field increased our output voltage. Our next step we saw was 30 volts, right? We weren't at the rate of voltage yet, so we dropped back down in here. Our current in our shunt increases, okay? We're at 30 volts, that gets us up to 60 milliamps. That 60 milliamps of amp turn increases our current. I'm sorry, not increases our current, increases the magnetic field. Mm -hmm. Magnetic field increase increases our output voltage again. Okay? Now the next step, we're at 100 volts. We at our rate of voltage yet? Nope. Come back down there, that 100 volts, now we have 200 milliamps of the shunt field. That 200 milliamps, Magnetic field now increases, our output voltage is up to 120 volts, with our rate of, rate of voltage, we're done. That increasing cycle is now done. Okay? What happens at that point? It, the, the, the generator we, shuts down? No, the generator is at our 120 volts, oh, and that's where we want to use it. Oh, that's where you okay. max it. Think about the series generator. You turn on one light bulb, and we go up to 10 volts. Remember last year, with the last semester, with our <coughs> your combination circuits, 120 volt bulb at 10 volts, it's pretty dim, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So well, let's turn on another light bulb. Now they both go up because now we got maybe 30 volts. Turn on another light bulb. That's not a very useful generator, is it? Okay. In this case, we start up. There is no mode. We fire up our generator, our shunt generator, it goes right up to our rated mode of 120 volts. Now we can start using it. Okay? Good. Questions? Yes, Dennis. Once you reach on the design uh, saturation limitations on a particular size generator, the only way to increase its output is to go bigger. Is that? Is to go, when we talk about our rated, you have a rated voltage, so you're going to use it at an application that it's designed for, for 120 volts. You don't want to increase that voltage, you may burn out your equipment. Now if you want to have more power out of it, more amps, you will have to increase the size, rewind it, larger wire, larger generator. Okay? So why does the shunt field use small wire in one terms and the CO2 use bigger wire? Excellent question. Come on up here. Okay. Now, shunt field. A lot of turns, small wire. So our turns are really high, but our current is small, right? Amp turns. Okay? We have thousands of turns of wire, so we can get a huge, huge field generated here with a little bit of current because of the high number of turns. Now, when we talked about our series field, our series field, we need to use large wire. Because you don't want to have a lot of voltage drop in there. So the series field is large wire and small turns. Okay? We're going to come back to the series field when we get to the compound generators, because the series field will primarily be used as a correction field. And you'll see what we're talking about that in a little bit. Okay? So um, back to the other question about the, the final output voltage. At that point, the starter motor, or, you know, the motor that's running the generator, even if you increase the RPM on the starter motor, it's not going to change anything. You can, if the motor's running this, 
your prime mover and it's running and you increase the, the RPM, it will try and increase your output voltage, okay? Because we're increasing the speed of it. So you but have if, to we're, if we're all saturated, there's going to get to be a limit to how much it's going to increase, okay? 